Hello everyone, welcome to Jumperman Tech, where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. And today we're going to go over what is a thermostatic or thermal expansion valve and how does it work. Alright everyone, so today we're going to go over what is a TEV or what is a TXV. And TXV or TEV is an abbreviation for thermal expansion valve or thermostatic expansion valve. There are two types of valves used and they are the internally equalized or the externally equalized. This can come in a flared or a sweat connection or it can either come in a 90 degree angle or a straight slash horizontal setup. So if we look at the valve on the left right here, we see we have three ports as this one only has two. This one is externally equalized as we have an extra port here which gets plugged into your suction line. Uh, this, this valve right here has a flare connection is at, an, an, at a 90 degree angle and this one has a sweat connection which you would braze on and has a straight or horizontal setup. The operation between the two are the same except the externally equalized valves have an extra port on them called an equalizer line. That'll be this line right here. This is a major component for any AC or refrigeration circuit and separates the high side from the low side. Refrigerant enters the valve as a high pressure, high temperature liquid, and as it exits, it becomes a low pressure, low temperature liquid. If we look to the left, we're gonna see this component right here. It's gonna be known as the thermal bulb, the sensing bulb, or the feeler bulb. And inside of this component right here, it is filled with the same gas that is in the system, or it could come with a cross charge of two refrigerants. This component gets strapped down tightly to the suction line, where refrigerant is a low temperature, low pressure vapor. This is a type of expansion valve, as there are others, and the expansion valve controls the flow and amount of refrigerant entering the evaporator. So here I drew out a picture for everyone to see the internal parts of the valve. There are three pressures acting inside of the thermostatic expansion valve. That is bulb pressure, spring pressure, and evaporator pressure. The bulb pressure is an opening force, the evaporator pressure is a closing force, and the superheat setting spring, the spring pressure, is also a closing force. Alright, so we're going to start with bulb pressure this component right here, our sensing bulb or our filler bulb. So the bulb pressure comes from the sensing bulb that is mounted at the outlet of the evaporator which senses suction temperature and drives the diaphragm down if there is an increase. It's your diaphragm right here, top of your valve. The spring pressure, we're inside you can see this is our spring. The spring pressure is at a constant and pushes up against the diaphragm counter to the bulb pressure so here we have these rods right here. So you see this little plate. This gets, this is pushed up. It's another plate right here. It gets pushed up against the diaphragm. And you see this goes up while this is trying to force this way, this way. So it's up against each other. Uh, the spring pressure is calibrated and set by the equipment manufacturer, but can be set by the installer or service technician. All right, so not all of them will come with this feature, but if you look here, you can loosen this cap. And underneath here, we have a fitting. And we could just take our service wrench and we can adjust our spring. And by adjusting your spring, you are adjusting the superheat in the system. All right, so let's go over our components. Starting over here, this is our sensing bulb or our filler bulb. And attached to this is a thin co uh, copper line known as a capillary tube that goes in to our diaphragm, which is the top of our valve. Inside here is where we're going to read our bulb pressure. Um, if we look inside of our valve, we have these things called push rods, which is this shaded in poles that we have here, which moves up and down based on the spring pressure. Um, but that comes from a balance between your evaporator pressure bulb pressure and spring pressure. The difference between that will depend on if your valve will open or close. But 
Yeah, so we have our inlet here, which comes from our condenser. This is our liquid line. And the outlet uh, is going to go to our evaporator, which is a larger pipe. So, like we said, our sensing bulb is an opening force, which you can re read the pressure right here. Diaphragm is a closing force. And evaporator pressure is a closing force. Underneath here is like a little valve that you can adjust where you can adjust the spring. And this is also our superheat setting. So now we have our sensing bowl piped and strapped down to our suction line. And this is reading the temperature. As the pressure increases, our temperature increases. And this is going to increase pressure inside this capillary tube, which will send um, pressure down towards your diaphragm. And what happens here is that when this pressure is greater than your spring pressure and your evaporator pressure, these rods are going to push down against this spring and it's going to move our valve needle off the seat. So this valve needle is going to drop down and the spring is going to drop down. This pressure will drop down this spring. So now refrigerant can enter, come down around and then flow into our evaporator. So that is our opening force. Next, as we said, our spring pressure is at a constant. This, it is what it is. Um, over here, our evaporator pressure pushes up against the diaphragm when the suction pressure increases and closes, you know, it pushes the needle back onto this, its seat and does not allow refrigerant to flow. So based on the balance between these three pressures, your bowl pressure, evaporator pressure, and spring pressure, the valve will either open or it will close. So the TXV is a throttling device that controls the amount of refrigerant injected into a system's evaporator. So here's just a quick overview of the physical. Here's our sensing bulb. This right here is our capillary tube. Here is our diaphragm. This is our inlet, which is a smaller pipe coming from the condenser. This is our outlet, which is a larger pipe flowing into the evaporator. Underneath here, which not all of these come with this, uh, we have this adjustment here we can make on the spring which is inside. Like we said, this is an externally equalized line, so we have an extra port called the equalizer line on this one, so that's what that is. And when the sensing bulb reaches it, like we said, there's refrigerant inside here. So when the temperature increases on the suction line, it's going to sense that temperature and it's going to build pressure and it's going to go against this diaphragm which will then push down on this spring and allow refrigerant to flow from the inlet to the outlet to feed our evaporator. Our spring pressure is constant built inside and then we have our evaporator pressure and when when this increases right it's going to push up against this diaphragm closing the needle inside not allowing refrigerant to pass anymore. So the balance between basically these these three pressures but really the the balance between the suction pressure versus the bowl pressure against the spring pressure is what operates this valve and by using uh, the, the temperature at the suction line and this type of valve we can maintain a constant superheat if anybody found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.